Welcome. I'm I'm Jill Badonsky. That's that's Amanda. She's this school marm at the <laughs> Athenaeum. <laughs> and this is just a short half an hour version sampler of the writing as an easy art class that will be starting next week. And it's a, a class I love a lot, but it's sort of mysterious. I, I think this is the third or fourth time I've taught it for the Athenaeum. And people don't know exactly what it is. And that's why I just, I wanted to go through it, but it, it ha it's broad in scope. So it's hard to fit into a half an hour, but I did want to give you some experience with what it is and what it's about. And basically it's, mostly writing. Let, let me just share my screen here because I have a little PowerPoint. That's the name of it. And it's a lot of writing with guided prompts that trick you into easy writing and tips to easily make writing richer and more fun. So I've been, just about me, I've been writing for a very long time. <clears throat> been teaching writing in San Diego since the turn of the century. <laughs> and I just like to use really fun prompts to, to help people make it easier for them. So if, you know, most of the people who take classes at the Athenaeum are artists. And if you're an artist and you're curious about writing, this is a good class because it's, it's both for new writers who are intimidating by writing, but also if you are a writer, there's different ways that it will bring out a different voice. There's a bit of art. The art supports the same creative centers that writing comes from. So we do art and it it's basically to have fun because the biggest emphasis of this class is on creativity and fun, freeing you up from the usual blocks, comparison, doubt, fear, self, judgment, crankiness, and helping you think differently, just going beyond the obvious. And I'll, I'll give you some examples of how we'll be doing that. And just to say a little bit about me, I, I'm the author of, and illustrator of three books. My first one is a take up on the nine Greek muses. It's the nine modern day muses. Second one is a, a whoops, second one is a take up on the old farmer's almanac. It's an almanac. And the third one is the takeoff on an owner's manual for a car. And they're all illustrated because I, I love the combination of art and writing together. I think art stimulates writing and I think writing can stimulate art. So I'm going to put you right into an exercise right now and here we have an upside down couch, but it's no longer a couch. This is now an oval. This is a weird shape. Look at the negative space here and draw it, draw it quickly. Don't worry about what it looks like. The fact that we're drawing it upside down is taking away the need to be perfect. You can be drawing with a pen. I make people draw with pens so they don't erase a lot because we want those, those mistakes. That's what makes things more interesting. And you don't need to put that exact design on there. You can come up with your own design. You can use different colors, but see how much you can get. We're just gonna have a couple more minutes to get this down. Can make that design really loose just it'll come out looking pretty cool whatever it is take about 15 seconds to finish this up just whatever you get down is fine All 
All right. So let's see what you got. So this is, this is what I got. Turn it, turn it right side up now, if you haven't already. Nice. So, wow, we got some color on it. Don't those look neat? You guys did that in, in less than five minutes. So, um, any, any feedback about how that was, how it felt to do that? Do you like it? How many people like what came out? You're, all right, so good, really fast. Um, and I know that some of the people that don't have their hands up are perfectionists <laughs> and harshly judge their work. So we would work a little bit on that. One of the things I teach is finding the joy in art, whether it's perfect or not, and being able to tolerate things not perfect. That's sort of a requirement for creativity. So just letting go of the need to be perfect. So everybody has a couch now. So where, where's the writing coming? I'm gonna share my screen again. So let me know <laughs> if it's not shared. You guys see this? Is it, is it up there? Okay, so we drew it. Now fill in this sentence. You have your couch and you get to move over to writing. We sit on this couch when, or this sofa and Fill in the blank just really quick without thinking too much. It doesn't even need to make sense. So just one line, unless, you know, Sometimes this is a really intuitive way to start writing is filling in a sentence because you have something that you don't have to come up with, but let me, let me just see how many people filled in the sentence just pretty quickly. Just everybody. So something about you knew the completion of this sentence. For me, I would, we sit on this when we're waiting for mom to make dinner. Just, there's a sentence that, that goes with my couch. Does anybody wanna share what, what they came up with? Just take yourself off mute if you wanna share. Wendy. Um, I just automatically came with, we sit on this couch when we entertain with tea. Yeah. So it was just there. We have writing and ideas and characters just there. Sometimes we just need a little spur to, to call upon it. Anybody else want to share just, just what you, Sandy? We sit on the sofa when we are resting and looking out the window. Beautiful, beautiful. So in class where we go with that is we begin to teach writing principles. So say that sentence again, Sandy. We sit on the sofa when we are resting and looking out the window. So that's a great start. Um, and you can see that. Can you, can you see somebody sitting there and looking out the window? How many people are new to writing? How many people are kind of like, I'm sort of new to writing, this is scary. <laughs> um, how many? Okay, so I, I teach little writing tips that, that would help you take um, it to another level, which is adding detail. We are sitting on the couch and looking at the mockingbird outside. So you see how that adds an element of richness to it. And we all start with the generals and what we do is unpack. So the sentence Sandy gave us was perfect for unpacking and adding detail. So we learn these little tips. Anybody else wanna share their completion of their sentence? Alice? When we sit on this couch when my mother-in-law isn't looking. There we go. So we add a little mischief. These are all first sentences. And if 
you know, we don't have time now. It's not usually a half an hour class. We would sit in and see where else it would take us. Um, and the, the other thing that we can do, and I'm going to share my screen again and take you to the next one. What if you were a teenager and you started out with and you, relating to this couch, I'm not supposed to. What would you fill in that sentence with? Just really quickly, the less thinking, the better. And you'll, you'll notice that something is usually there. So finish that sentence. And what would you write if it was the point of view of someone in their 90s and the beginning of the sentence was, this sofa reminds me. How would you fill that in if you were in your 90s? If you just imagine how you might fill that in. Who wants to share either one of those? Anyone want to share either one of those? Um, I said, the, it reminds me of the day trying to decide on the fabric. It reminds me of the day when I was trying to decide on the fabric. Um, yeah, so that, that takes us back and to when it was upholstered. So we, we know about this character who's sitting on the couch that upholsters couches or sofas. So that one sentence told us about the person. So um, this sofa reminds me of the time my husband proposed to me. So from the 90 year old's point of point. And if I, if I unpack that, I would go, this sofa reminds me of a morning back in April when, when Ted asked me to marry him. So just getting a little bit more specific as we go from general to unpacking. Anybody else want to share either one of those sentences? Sandy? The teenager's point of view, I'm not supposed to put my feet on this sofa. There we go. <laughs> and if you continue to, you know, with that, you could be starting a story. A lot of people start stories or writings or essays at a, at a very logical beginning. There's a teenager sitting on a couch you know, what makes writing often pop is just starting with, I'm not supposed to sit on this. I'm not supposed to put my feet on this couch, but I am. My mom's not here, so I'm gonna do it. So we're, we're getting information about this character just by him talking like that or her. So that's, I, that's something we would be spending, you know, a half an hour on just, did I share again? Are you up? Okay. They're sharing, yeah. Oh. Okay, good. So this is a, this is a painting by um, this guy. <laughs> He's got a really long name, Edgar. Um, and it's filled with story, isn't it? Look at this. And we get to interpret it however we want because that's what a lot of artists like us to do. And so if we had some unfinished sentences, we would go through these quickly. So let's, we're gonna go through it a little quicker than I would in class, but sometimes going fast comes up with some really interesting things. So give her her name from a first person point of view. My name is? Rebecca. Okay, great. So write that down. And then fill in this sentence from what you think she, you know, your interpretation of what you think she's thinking. And then I'm adding sentences. So when you finish, take on the next sentence.
So how many people found it easy just to fill in those sentences pretty quickly? Yeah. Anybody wanna read one or all of your sentences or a few of them? Go ahead, Sandy. You, you get an A today for participation. <laughs> I'm alone because my fiance has not shown up for dinner. I hope he is well. I think I must be a worry wart. That's as far as I got. Okay, good, good. So you're creating a story based on this, this image. Let's, let's hear from somebody else. Even if, you know, feels weird or you're, you're judging your work, just say it anyway. Go, go ahead, Barbara. Um, I'm alone because I feel most comfortable that way. I hope the waiter comes already. I think I might be overdressed, but at least I got out of the house. I know I have issues. That's great. So you have a, the beginnings of, of writing that you can take another place. Mine was kind of like yours. I'm alone because I prefer eating alone. I hope the waiter brings two creme brulees instead of one. I think this <laughs> restaurant is lovely. I know the man that just walked in, and, but I'm wondering if the waiter is going to bring me two cream brulees. So, um, so we, we like to project ourselves into things. <laughs> I, I like cream Yeah. Anybody else want to share your sentences or one of them? Or I, I'm so, I thought she was happy. Yeah. So that that's that's. Um, our, we get to interpret it as whatever we want. There's no right or wrong here. So some people feel like she's she got stood up or she's waiting for somebody that's late. You know, we think I'm alone because I prefer eating alone. I like it. Yeah, she looks happy to me too. Yeah, I had a whole different bent on it. Do you want to read yours? Um, I don't know if there's time. I, I can. Yeah. So, um, my name is Lila. <clears throat> I'm alone because my boyfriend went to pay the bill. I hope he asks me out again and he walks me home. As he walks me home, I think I'm in love. I know this is exciting, but I'm wondering what are his kisses like? Yeah, <laughs> it just seems like that was all meant to be, right? It was all there. We we have so much writing inside of us, so many ideas. Sometimes we just need a little trigger in order for it to come out and then we can shape it. So these are these are clocks. Um, and so one of the things this class works with is just the mindfulness of sharing details. Just take a moment and write what you see. Just make a list of details just really quickly. There's no right or wrong again. You're not being graded on this. Just, just make a number of observations about these clocks. and. Ignore this thing over here. It's not supposed to be there. So take about 10 more seconds to just, if you feel like you're finished, one way to push into a little bit more creative space is come up with two more, no matter what it is. There's two more always than we, we think. We just need to 
be a little resourceful and think deeper. So what are some of the things you noticed about the clocks? Anybody want to share? Just kind of reading from your list. Maria, you want to share any of yours? Yeah, so a couple of things I noticed, there are different colors. There was like a seafoam green and a purple and a lavender. There were two that had bell like alarms. Um, they all had little feet. One had a white face, some had ivory faces. They all had different type faces for the numbers. So those are just some things I noticed. Wow, you noticed a lot more than I did. <laughs> nice noticing. Um, so in the moment of studying these clocks, we're in a place of focus, aren't we? You all had to focus, which has not been easy in, in the pandemic, has it? I don't know about you, but it's been hard for me to focus. So we come into the present moment. Sometimes just a list of making these observations about something in front of you is almost poetic in and of itself. There's five clocks, one's lavender, one's turquoise, two have bells. That's poetic in and of itself. Anybody else want to read something that they might have captured there? Sandy? I could all have a second hand. They all have a second hand, yeah. Yeah, and they're made of metal. Uh, they're all set at five o'clock. The numerals are different sizes. And the tops, the very top of the clocks, are they're all different. They're either a different size or there's a different design on the, or no design on the top. Wow, good observational skills. Anybody else have something that nobody's caught yet. So these are, this is an exercise in just observing because there's, there's poetry everywhere. And it's a matter of learning to pay attention to see what's in front of us. And a, a way to become even more intimate with the objects that we're, we're looking at is to then, this is a timed drawing. So I did this drawing in, uh, I'd say less than a minute. Oof. And I, I didn't do the painting. That, what I did was I had a painted background. So the background was painted in all different colors. Then I did a, a drawing in about a minute. And what that does is it, it helps me not to be perfect and just to go fast and create, do you see the energy in this? That energy wouldn't be there if I was trying to be perfect. So let me, let me just put this back up with, and, and just do this really fast. So we're just going to take a minute and we're just going to do the drawing part of it. Just really fast. So I'm going to time you and I'm going to turn it off in a minute. Um, so see see what you can do. You don't want to capture some of it. You want to capture all of it. So you're not seeing how much you can do. You're seeing doing it all and maybe abbreviating how you might do it and allowing for that energy. Preferably with a pen, not a pencil. And again, let go of it needing to look like this. Let it take on whatever look you're giving it. So just 20 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's see what you came up with. So let's see your drawings. Neat. And look at how different all of these are. They, wow, how, <laughs> these are so wonderful. I love the, this is, 
one of the reasons I teach these classes is just to see these drawings. Yeah. Nice going. So you see the energy and in, in what it looks like going fast and putting a watercolor wash over this just makes it look like you're this creative genius. Yeah. So, so that's another place that we can go. And it, we don't have time for everything I cover in this class because there's so many different ways to go. These are, these are titles of paintings, but look at these. They're all also titles of poems or the potentially titles of poems, a desert story. Just think of the words that could come from these or taking these and combining these. There's a different kind of sky. It's a dry, cold season sky. It's a sky where we had a dusty ride and a feeling of rain. There's a break in the clouds. There's a chance of rain. There's a break in reality. So you see, just taking titles of paintings and combining them that quickly can turn them into poetry. The other thing we do is do scribble art and then we give those titles. And from those titles, we create um, different kinds of writing. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. This is found poetry. Some of you may have heard of this before. This is, um, this is a book with all sorts of writing and there's a poem in there somewhere. So you, you black out um, words until you, you have some sort of poem like this. And you can do this a number of ways. You don't have to ruin a book. You can take a picture of it and use an app to block out the words. Or you can go to one of those libraries that are on, you know, in the neighborhoods and pick out a, a book and, and make it into a poem. We do acrostics. This is, I was born in July. Jogging makes me jiggle much like jello unless I wear a bra. Laughing makes my belly jiggle unless you think I need a girdle. Boy, when I wrote girdle, I felt old. <laughs> All right. So this is another, let's see, I think we're running out of time. Yeah. But we do things like using the alphabet to list visuals from our life. But to move it into a creative arena, instead of just apples, what is the association? A really way to get creativity going is your associations to words. Apples or the apple fight I had in 1975 on a canoe trip down the Allegheny River in Pennsylvania. See the, the difference between those two? B is for birds or bird watching in Payne's Prairie and Gainesville with binoculars and a bird book looking for ospreys. So just getting really detailed. Here's a, a poem. And, you know, since this is the Athenaeum and art, we want to go into abstract, even in our poetry. Two men are holding up airplanes. There are many airplanes waiting to take flight, but these two are holding them up. These men have too much control. They have folded too much power into their egos. They need to get off the chair. <clears throat> so like an abstract painting, you're kind of like, huh? <laughs> but it's an abstract poem. And to me, it was just very satisfying to write it just, just because um, it feels good to get weird words on the paper sometime. But these words came from this picture. There's two men holding up airplanes and there's all these airplanes waiting to take flight, but these two are holding them up. They folded too much power into their egos. They need to get off the chair. So it's, it's using a picture to create a poem and nobody needs to see this picture. They just think you're this, this poetic, esoteric, eccentric person. At the end of most classes, we pick an abstract painting. This is a Kandinsky and, and write about it. So this is, this is just the beginning of a poem that I wrote. There's a page in my mom's art history book with the background of black hosting red and blue and gold and green squares and points. There's a geometric nook into space. 
what looks like a fishtail, a book, a hot air balloon, but one can't really be sure what occupies this Kandinsky abstract and the black is covering up the, uh, am I still on share? No. No or yes, was that a yes? Your gallery, now your gallery. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So the rest of it is who occupies Kandinsky's abstract composition X, a funny name for a painting that has no X to mark the spot. So you don't know what your relationship is with your mom or the world or fish. Um, and it goes on from there. So we use abstract paintings to come up with some writing. Um, and just quickly, and I'll, I will finish up. I know we're going over a little bit here, but let me see. Another thing we do is is word collages. So this is this is an E. E. Cummings poem, and what I would do. Oh, this is Walt Whitman. So we. I would just scroll like this and you would very quickly capture some words in here, just random words and phrases. You can't capture everything because I'm going this fast. And you would have a list of words and phrases at the end of this. And then you would take those and weave them into your own poetry. So we, we cover a lot of different areas of art and writing and simple watercolor techniques, simple drawing techniques, right brain techniques, and that's what we do. It's kind of a weird class, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. And the purpose is just to have a, a place to have fun and be creative and learn some new techniques and get some poetry and prose and essays and beginnings of memoirs or middles of memoirs to, to work um, with. So it's called Writing as an Easy Art. It starts next Tuesday at this time. And if you're interested, um, it's on the, the website, right? Or we can send out a link. I you. just, um, I put uh, in the chat, I put all the information about it. And there's also a link there to register. Um, and I'll send a, a follow-up email. Um, we'll have a recording of this if you want to watch it again. Um, I know Claire, you joined us late, so you'll get to see the, the beginning part. So um, any questions? I'll tell you that um, this class gets rave reviews um, from students who take it, even those who think they're not into writing. Um, and I, I'm not surprised. I took a class from Jill um, it's about a year ago or something and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, very, very cool. Any questions? Jill, did you get the cat? picture I, I did I did Yay. oh it's great I was I was gonna it's it's around here somewhere Barbara yeah, did a, another funny picture you have a funny cat <laughs> she did a scribble picture of my little Siamese cat and it's great <laughs> it's like um yeah thanks so much for sending that Barbara I really of appreciate course. it <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you all for spending a little time with me and thanks for sharing your work and I hope to see some of you in class. And thanks, Amanda, for putting us together. And, of course. And uh, all that. So yeah. thank you, Jill. Have thank a great you. rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You.